In this video, we will show you how to replace your rear shock absorbers on this Toyota Sienna. This is part of your rear suspension located inside of your rear wheel well. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. The first thing you need to do is raise and support the rear of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. Once you've completed that, we'll continue on to removing all five of our 21 millimeter lug nuts and then you can remove the wheel. The next thing we'll do is make our way down behind the rear brake area. You're going to find the rear shock. This is held in place right along the inboard side here with a 19 millimeter mounting nut. Let's remove that nut. A quick inspection of that, make sure it is reusable. Just behind that nut, you're going to find that you have an enlarged washer. We're going to be reusing that as well. The next thing we'll have to do is break the shock free from this mounting point. Sometimes you can take it by hand and give it a wiggle. Other times you may have to gently pry it. Either way, we're only breaking it free and not removing it from this area. Use a small pry bar for this. We definitely got movement. Let's pause on the shock and apply support underneath this portion right here. You can use a jack stand and carefully lower the vehicle applying only a light amount of pressure in this area. And once you've done that, make your way into the rear of the passenger compartment. Now from inside the rear of the passenger compartment, we're going to be looking along the side trim panel. On each side of the vehicle, you're going to find that you have this piece. We'll use a small trim tool to pop it out of place. That's a protective cover. And just behind that, you're going to find a small rubber boot. You can remove that as well. If you have to pry it, just use that trim tool. Now behind that, you can see the top portion of that rear shock. This is the mounting nut. To remove this, we're going to have to hold the shaft in the center using an Allen head socket and use a 19 millimeter to remove that mounting nut. To be able to hold onto that center portion of the shaft, you may have to use a long extension. If you do, you're going to have to remove this portion of the trim panel. We'll just pop that right out of the way. Now we can use our six millimeter Allen head with our extension and come right down diagonally into this area. That's going to hold the center shaft still while we continue turning that nut counterclockwise to remove it. This will be easiest using a ratcheting 19 millimeter wrench. There we are. Once you get it to break free, typically it's a little easier. Careful not to drop this inside behind the panel. That can be an issue. You're gonna have to use a magnet of some sort. There's our mounting nut, a quick inspection, we'll set that aside. Just under that, you're going to find that you have a washer. We'll go ahead and take hold of that, pull it right out of place as well. It's stuck on there, there it is. Set that aside. Next, you're going to find that you have a bushing that makes its way down towards the body of the vehicle. Just take hold of that, pull it right up and out of place. Now let's make our way back inside the rear wheel well. We'll take hold of the rear shock and slide it away from this stud towards the center of the vehicle. Now we should be able to give this a wiggle and pull it out of the vehicle. There it is, friend. Now before you dispose of your original shock, we're going to remove this protective portion along the top. For that, you can just take hold of that and the shock itself and gently slide the two apart. At this point, you can recycle that old shock. We'll set that aside. Now on this portion, you're going to find that you have a rubber bushing up along the top. This is fairly easy to remove if you just have a small pry bar or a small prying device. You could even use a screwdriver if necessary. Just be careful not to hurt yourself. We'll slide that right on off of there. A quick inspection of that will dispose of that properly. The next thing you need to do is clean and inspect this area. Make sure it's not rotted and damaged. A little bit of rust is okay. Continuing on, you're going to find in the kit, it came with a brand new rubber bushing for this area. We'll just take that and slide it right on there as far as possible. Now it's time to prepare to install our brand new rear shock assembly. 
Before you install this in the vehicle, there's a couple things we're going to do. We'll start with one of the washers that we had gotten in our kit, the one with the smaller of the two holes. We're going to take that and slide it right over the shaft of the shock here. It should rest in this position. Now the next thing we need to do is hold onto the bottom of the shock with our feet so it can't slide away, and we're going to depress the shock down as far as possible and let it completely retract all the way back up. Repeat this process approximately three to five times. With our rear shock fully charged, we're going to continue on to putting on our protective cover. If you were to look deep inside of this, looking all the way up, you're going to find a rubber jaunts bumper. It's hollow in the center for the shaft of the shock to go up and through. You may find it takes a couple tries to get it lined up properly. Let's try to go right into the center here. Now we can get ready to install the brand new shock assembly into the vehicle. We'll start by bringing this in and putting the top up inside the body of the vehicle. Let's get this lower portion slid into position as well. If you need to, you could carefully use a rubber mallet to tap it into the proper position. Now let's make our way up into the passenger compartment again. We're going to be paying attention to where the shock comes up through the body. We want to try to have that shock in the center of the mounting port of the body of the vehicle. If you have a hard time aligning that, you could use your tool, come right down through the center of the shaft and make your alignment as necessary. Once you've completed that, we're going to continue on with our brand new bushing here. We'll just slide that right down onto the shaft, continue on with the washer, and then we'll also install our brand new mounting nut. Looking at the washer, you can tell that it is concave. We want to have the area that goes inward facing down. Now it's time for the new locking nut. You want to make sure you have the blue neoprene facing up. That's the locking device for this mounting nut. Careful not to drop it into that body panel there. The next thing we'll do is snug up that nut, but we're not going to torque it yet. We have to have the entire weight of the vehicle back on the ground first. Okay, right there is bottomed out. Let's pause here and make our way back down to the lower shock mounting point. At this point, you can remove the support from underneath the suspension and we'll be continuing on with this mounting point here. We've got our washer and our locking nut. Go ahead and start that on there, snug it up and torque it to 85 foot pounds. One last quick inspection in the wheel well area and we'll reinstall our wheel. Start on all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts. We'll bottom them out, get the wheel safely back down on the ground, and we can torque each of these to 76 foot pounds. With the wheel safely back down on the ground, we'll be torquing these in a crisscross manner. Torqued, let's make our way up into the passenger compartment. Now back up in the passenger compartment, the next thing you need to do is continue tightening this mounting nut. The torque for this is 23 foot pounds. Commonly, if you were to put a 19 millimeter socket on there and try to torque it, the entire shaft is going to spin. So what we're going to do is go ahead and hold that shaft and we'll make sure that the nut is nice and tight using our 19 millimeter wrench. Once you've confirmed that this is nice and tight and centered as it needs to be, continue on with putting on your protective covers. We'll start with the rubber cover here. That's going to slide right over that washer.
press it down on there. Double check to make sure it's secure so it doesn't fall off while you're driving down the road and get lodged someplace down in this area. We have our plastic cover. We're going to start down along the bottom in that hooked area and then roll it in up along the top to lock it in the proper position. Now we have this upper corner piece. This is going to come in diagonally. Okay friend, we finished the installation of our rear shock. The process for one side of the vehicle is the exact same thing as the other. Typically when you do these, it's always a good idea to replace them as a pair. Once you've done so, go ahead and take your vehicle for a road test down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.